Like I said, we're almost at the end now. Composite solids, we've looked at composite solids in this topic already. But we weren't looking at volume, we were looking at surface area. Now what I'd like you to do is, just put like your finger or your pen in the current page where you're at, and then just turn back, turn back to where we did surface area of composite solids. Do you remember what I told you at the beginning of that lesson? And I hope you have some things written down. What's there? Thank you very much. I said, composite solids, they come in, no pun intended, all shapes and sizes. So therefore, there's no formula, you don't treat them all the same, but there are principles that work for all of them. Okay? So the first thing I want to note is, go look at those three principles, just cast your eye over them. Uh, from memory, I think it's, you want to draw stuff? Yeah. Draw diagrams? Yeah, add, uh, yeah, add some construction there. Label what the faces are that you're looking at, and lastly, yeah, make sure you, if you've taught, taught this one and this two, tell me what you're doing, okay? Come back to where you got this heading, today's heading. The first thing I want to say about volumes of complex solids is everything from the surface area of composite solids, everything else still applies. You should still draw a diagram. You should still label it carefully. And when you're doing the final answer, you should still identify all the components. I suppose the only difference is, because we're doing volume, not surface area, volume's not interested in faces, right? Volume's interested in what kind of shapes, what kind of blocks make up this thing, okay? But the idea is the same. So number one, everything you've learned before, let's use those principles again. But I'm going to include two extra little dot points under here. The two extra dot points are, there are two ways you can make a composite solid. You can take a familiar shape, like this. And if you like, you can sort of tack something onto the side. So I could say, uh, let's say, put a pyramid on top of here. Okay? So that's one way to make a composite solid. And you can see you do the cube, then you do the pyramid, and you would combine them. No big deal. But that's not the only way to make a composite solid. How else could I do it? <coughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Instead of adding a solid, I could like punch a hole in it, something like this. Uh, here's my cube. And I could say drill a cylindrical hole right through the middle. Okay. So you can either do things by addition or subtraction, or if they want to be really sneaky, some combination of both. Okay. So my tip is, look carefully. When you've got your composite solid, is it composed of adding shapes together? Is it addition of volumes? Or is it subtraction? Okay, so that's the first thing you need to look at because obviously uh, you can work these two things out and the numbers are going to be the same, <coughs> but here you'll add the volumes, here you'll subtract. Okay, and you've got to know which one you're subtracting from which, big one versus small one. There's the second principle on our numbers. Secondly, look at the question. Under this idea of volume of composite solids, there's a very, very closely related idea to volume that's not quite volume. It's about, well, if I got a bottle of milk or a can, I wouldn't say, oh, here you go, here's uh, 250 cubic centimeters of milk. You wouldn't describe a liquid like that. Instead of saying volume, you would say, what measure capacity. would you use? You would say capacity. So capacity is measured in mils, liters, kiloliters. That's the kind of unit that we measure. Okay? Now, I always used to be quite confused about oh, what's the difference. Okay? So let me point out the difference in two ways. Number one, the units. So the units here, for example, uh, we looked at this just now. So you could have uh, cubic centimeters or you could have cubic meters, or if you have something really big, you could have cubic kilometers. Okay. So that's how we measure volume. Alternatively, as I was just mentioning, we measure capacity in things like mils, please notice the capital L, liters, or you could just keep on going up. Uh, that's a capital M. Okay. Uh, by the way, mils, does anyone know what mils is short for? It's short for milliliters, right? And the milli, like millimeter, it's one thousand, right? So from here to here to here to here, if you can't remember, 
each time you go up a level, you're multiplied by a thousand. And that's worth including on your um, where you've written this. Okay? Uh, also note, because we tend to use water in very large quantities, like we measure it, like a dam even, which is a small body of water, it's pretty big. When you go from mils all the way up to megaliters, which is times a thousand, times a thousand, times a thousand, please note, either when you write an answer or when you read it, big M for megaliters, little m for milliliters. That's easy to remember because the little m is a little measure and the big M is a big measure. Now, there's one more thing I want to say. It's not just the units, right? They're actually measuring different kinds of things and I'll try and explain what I mean. Volume, I need a new colour. Volume is about how much space does an object like a composite solid, how much space does it take up? Does it take up? Okay? So that's like, okay, well how far do you have to measure to get this? Capacity is a little bit different. And this prefix, kappa, not creating performing arts in this context, is what describes to you what the difference is. Capacity is, this is the question asked by volume, the question asked by capacity is, how much are you capable of carrying? Okay, let me say that again. Volume is about how much space does an object take up? Whereas capacity is how much stuff is it capable, like a container, capable capacity of holding. So really it's kind of the difference between the inside and the outside. Now just to make things simple, in most cases we don't ask you to distinguish between the inside and outside. We kind of picture these um, solids as having perfectly thin walls, so the outside is the same as the inside. So you can go back and forth between these. Does anyone know? How do you convert between volume and capacity? Does anyone know? Yeah. Is it one centimetre cubed equals one milliliter? Perfect. So put this in a nice big box over on the left hand side of your book, or your right hand side of your space there. If you've worked out how many cubic centimetres are in an object, that's how many mils there are. Simple. Um, you can use this to convert to all the rest. For instance, if I wanted not one mil, but one litre, what would that be? From here to here, it's gotten a thousand times bigger. So therefore, this also has to get a thousand times bigger. So this is one thousand cubic centimetres. Okay? You have to be a little bit careful if you do say something like this, a cubic metre. <clears throat> Here's a metre, right? This is a metre. So if I said, let's do it this way. Can you guys see that green light? Can yeah. you make it out? It's the visible one, okay? So that's how wide my box is. This is how high my box is. And then to make it a cubic meter, I have to come out like this as well. Does that make sense? This is a big box, right? It's that wide, that high, and this is how far out it comes. So this is a lot of liters, right? Can we work out how many? Hmm. I need a bit more space. I hope you've got a bit of space underneath where you've written a cubic meter. Let's do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into cubic centimetres. Okay? So I notice, just watch this, one metre cubed is actually one metre times one metre times one metre. That's what I was doing with this, do you remember? Like one, one, one. Yeah? How many centimetres in a metre? A hundred. But notice, just like the whole metre gets cubed, the whole 100 centimetres also gets cubed. So 100 times 100 times 100. How many zeros? Six. That's a million, isn't it? Yeah? So now I'm ready to do my conversion based on my first line over there. That is one million mils. So now I can convert to litres if I want to. How many litres? It's exactly a thousand litres, which means that, by coincidence, it is exactly one kilo litre. That's a lot of three, three litre milk cartons, okay? But that's because, like I said, this thing is surprisingly big. We don't usually think in cubic metres. So, let's review. 
everything you knew about drawing diagrams, labeling clearly, setting out your working properly, uh, do that again when you're doing volumes. In fact, in some ways, even more so. Secondly, be careful. Are you adding shapes together or are you taking them away? And lastly, just pay attention. What are they actually asking for? If they are asking for capacity, just like I have, work out your volume first and then do a conversion like this and you won't go wrong. Okay?